Hello, I'm Nate, product specialist from Hydoff North America, and today I'm going to show you how to install your HiVap Ultimate Control with a valve regulated pump. Step one, we're going to remove the transportation lock with the size 3 metric Allen. Once the transportation lock is removed, the drive is going to lift up. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to put one hand on top of the drive while I remove the first screw. Once the drive has lifted all the way up, I'm going to remove the second two screws. Step two, we're going to attach your vacuum control box, your vacuum control unit, and your vacuum valve to your rotary evaporator. First, going to take the vacuum valve and your vacuum controlling unit, which includes your vacuum sensor and your relief valve, and connect them. This will come with a tube on it going to hook up to the barbed connector here and you're going to screw it on with two T10 screws. Once that has been attached, you're going to use the two threaded screws that come with your control unit and screw them into these two holes on your rotary evaporator. You're gonna screw them about half of the way in. Then you can drop that vacuum control unit right on top of it. Tightening the screws afterwards so there's no movement. Once the unit is on, you can take your vacuum control box and attach that to your rotary evaporator. So we'll have two T20 screws that screw in right here. Once both of these have been attached, you can connect everything into the vacuum control box and then the vacuum control box into your rotary evaporator. It's gray cord. It's the aerating valve that'll be at the top. black cord connected to the vacuum sensor will be the third plug labeled vacuum sensor. And the vacuum valve that you just attached will go in the bottom where it's labeled vacuum pump slash vacuum valve. And lastly, we'll hook the vacuum box itself into the rotary evaporator where it says control box high vap. Step three, we're going to add the evaporation flask to our high vap. While we're here though, we're going to first attach the high vap itself to the heating bath using this IP67 screwing cable. It slots right in the back here, lines with notches, and can be screwed on fairly easily. That is so at any time you can remove the bath for filling and emptying. Once that's been screwed on, I'm going to pull the bath out a little bit since we will be using a five liter flask. We're going to remove the screw connection and tension spring from the left side where we'll find our vacuum seal. And we're going to remove our swing clamp with its easy clip. We remove that because inside you will find your clamping sleeve. This clamping sleeve slots over your vapor tube and prevents glass on metal contact inside your unit. The reason why we removed the screwing clamp and the tension spring is because we want to hold down that seal while pushing this through to prevent any of the lips from being bent in. After that, we can add back on the easy clip by holding this lock button and then unscrew the clip portion of this two-piece device. Open up the swing and grab your evaporating flask. Slide it over your vapor tube, clip down, and tighten. Step four, we will be assembling the glassware on our high vap. We'll start with our G3XL condenser. From the box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have attached four GL14s with barbed connectors. 
and two GL18 caps. Once that is done, you will take that screwing clamp that we removed in the last step and slide it over this connection. Following that, the tension spring that was included will go around to prevent it from sliding off. You'll take that and connect it to your drive. We can now add our extra condenser support. First, by taking the flat edge and sliding it into this hole in the drive where you'll find a hand tightening screw, which you can tighten to lock that in securely. Then take the boss head. I recommend loosening the part that goes around the condenser first, pulling that over before trying to get it around the rod. Loosen those up, pull it down to about the halfway mark or wherever you choose and tighten everything up. Help make sure your larger condenser won't fall. Following that, you can attach our three liter flask. Connects to this ball joint with a clamp that you can tighten so it will not open. Step five, we're going to attach our HiVap Ultimate panel to our HiVap. You're gonna see a white notch on the back of the panel and the white notch on the cable on your HiVap. They're going to slot into each other to connect and you're going to slide this cable back down through the hole, line up the four slots and push down until you hear a click. Step six, we're going to attach our chiller to our condenser. The first thing we're going to do is cut two pieces of tubing that are the length from your condenser to where you'll be housing your chiller. When attaching the tubing to your chiller, it's important that you use these ring clamps that come in the tubing set provided with your HiVap glassware. This ring clamp will slot over the tube and after you attach the tube to the barbed connector, will be pulled over the barbed connector and using a flathead or Phillips screwdriver or a flathead or Phillips screw, um, screw gun, you can tighten that so the tube will not pop off due to the pressure. You will do the same thing with your second piece of tubing. And ensure it's not gonna pull off. Now we're going to attach the tubing that we just attached to our chiller to our condenser. And due to its dual coil design, it doesn't matter which of these two connections is in or out. Step seven, we will be connecting our vacuum line from our Rotovac valve tech to our HiVap condenser. We're first going to start by cutting out three pieces of tubing that will match the length from your Rotovac valve tech to your vacuum valve, from your aeration valve to your condenser, one of these two ports up here, and from the other port to your vacuum sensor. Once you've cut those, you can start attaching. This is the port on the valve tech you're going to want to use to your vacuum valve, to your aeration valve, to your condenser, and from your condenser to your vacuum sensor. Step eight, attaching common accessories to your HiVap. So I'm gonna be showing you three of the most commonly used accessories that will be going with your HiVap. The first being a ventilation and replenishment valve. This will replace your manual aeration valve. And what this guy will do is slot into your evaporation flask on one end using another piece of tubing 
that you will cut to the length required to connect from this part of the valve to your product vessel. And thirdly, what will then happen is by loosening this valve, the internal vacuum in the system will suck up your product into the evaporation flask so you can refill it without needing to remove that flask. The second most commonly used accessory with our high vap is the auto accurate sensor. This sensor will replace this GL18 cap up here. Slide through your coils. and plug in to the side of your high vap drive. What this sensor enables is automatic evaporation through our dynamic auto accurate function. Lastly, the third accessory that is commonly used with the rotary evaporators is an RS-232 cable that will connect your high vap to your chiller so you can operate your chiller's cooling parameters from your high vap ultimate panel. First, we're going to connect our RS-232 cable to the control box right here and clamp it down with the screws. The other end of your RS-232 cable will connect to the back of the chiller right here and screw in as well. Thank you for watching the video on how to install your high vap ultimate control with a valve regulated pump. Again, I am Nate, Proc Specialist from Tidal North America. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me at the contact information below.